Hi, I'm Sony Artisan Patrick Murphy Racy. I'm here to talk to you today about not this lens, but the other 600 millimeter lens, the 200 to 600 G. I see mostly on Facebook and other social media, I mostly see people raving about that lens, how sharp it is, the amazing pictures they get with it. I also see some people complaining that maybe their 200 to 600 G is not sharp. And I get a little worried about that because I've shot that lens, I've shot about three different versions of it, three different copies, and they're all really good. Now, it's possible that some people have a bum copy or maybe there was impact damage or something like that, but I just wanted to just hear me out, okay? So I wanted to kind of go through this. Now, in the old days of film, a thousandth of a second was really, really fast. It stopped action in ways that you cannot stop action with a CMOS sensor nowadays with a digital camera. It was almost like a, it was like a two or three for one. So a thousandth of a second in film kind of is around like maybe 2,500 of a second in digital now. So it's harder for a CMOS sensor by its nature to stop things as well as a, a CCD sensor or film did. Um, so that's point one. Point two is the longer your focal length, the higher shutter speed you need to stop action uh, from your, you have, to, you have to counterweight your own movement as a photographer. And so many people are shooting the two to six and they're, it's so lightweight and, and easy to kind of wing around that a lot of them are doing it either without a, a, a monopod or a tripod. And this can cause big problems with focus. Um, so one of the things that you need to do is when you think you have a lens that's not sharp, one of the things that's really important to do is look closely at your images to decide if there's some area of the, of the frame that's sharp. Now, if, if it's a bird on grass or something like that, or a football player on grass, you can actually look at the blades of grass and figure out where the camera focused, where the lens was at when it shot the picture. Now, sometimes it can be operator error, sometimes the, even the tracking system can fail, but usually not, and that's why I'm doing this video. So, number one, you got to really raise your shutter speed up high in order to counter the, the lack of the sensor's ability to stop action in the way that we used to do it with film and CCD chips. Number two, you have to raise your shutter speed the longer your lens is, the more you have to increase the shutter speed and be steady at what you're doing. Number three, when you add a 1.4 converter, as I've done here with the 600 f4, this combination is not a prime 840 millimeter, but it is the field of view of an 840 millimeter, which means it's gonna be super herky-jerky and hard to hold still. Things are gonna jump all over the place, even with in-body stabilization. So when you use a 2 to 6 G, it's really, really important that you kind of really are cognizant of what shutter speed you're at, is it high enough, things like that. Now, one of the things you wanna look at, like I said, is you gotta look at what's sharp in the frame. If nothing is sharp in the frame, then you have to wonder if it's movement blur. Okay, so especially if you're talking about bird, birders, people are shooting birds in flight especially. Now, when you shoot birds in flight, it's almost impossible to use a monopod and you just kind of, you know, winging around like that and it's, it's like the worst thing you could possibly do to get a really, really sharp image. So when you do that, it might be best to take it off the monopod if you're gonna hand hold and shoot birds in flight. But when you do that, you are introducing way more opportunities for you to blur because you're not steady. And I've shot about six or eight different 1.4 converters. I own two of them. They're incredibly sharp. And they're incredibly sharp with every lens that they go on. Um, and so I get worried that people are not really taking this extra shutter speed requirement seriously. Just kind of remember that your best results are going to be on a tripod, number one. Your second best results are going to be on a monopod, number two. Your third and worst results are going to be handheld. And if you're shooting birds in flight and you're panning, which means you're moving on purpose while you're shooting, that requires enormous high shutter speeds. So don't be afraid to go up to 8,000th of a second, 6,400th of a second. This is very likely where you're gonna to need to be in order to stop things for real. So I, I just get a little worried when I see, sometimes I see, most posts I see about the two to six G, people just rave about it, they love it. 
But sometimes I say, I'm not sure if my copy's sharp. And then I get worried. I think, I don't know if they're really using a high enough shutter speed. Just bear all that in mind as you kind of, you know, get used to your 2 to 6G um, and get used to your 600 F4, your 400 to 8. You really have to use high shutter speeds. And when you're panning, they've got to be higher than normal if you're shooting off a monopod. So, hope this is helpful. Again, I'm Sony Artisan Patrick Murphy Racy. If you found this helpful, please subscribe to my channel and spread the word. I'm trying to do these as much as I can. Thank you so much for watching.